Press. There's a lot of hate, a lot of anger going on out there. Our next guest has written a book called The Opposite of Hate, A Field Guide to Repairing Our Humanity. She was a liberal commentator on Fox News. She now works for CNN, and she's written a book getting a lot of attention. Sally Cohn, welcome to Big 550 KTRS. Hey, great to be on with you. Uh, how is it that you are a liberal commentator and you got Sean Hannity to blurb your book? <laughs> Uh, you know, Sean, Sean's a friend, and I'm, I'm honored that he considers me a friend, too, and that we've, uh, you know, been able to, since our early days on Fox News together, I'll be on his show again, uh, I think, on Thursday this week, uh, in the evening. Um, uh, how can you, know, you say publicly... How can, each other's company. How can not, you... Uh, you know, how go can, ahead. Aren't you thrown out of your liberal uh, circles there by admitting that Sean Hannity is your friend? Uh, I don't know. Nobody's thrown me out of a circle right, yet. I'll have enough. to go back and check. Good to know. You know, look, it, it, uh, here's the thing. Two things. First of all, we all have things we disagree on, right? And and I doesn't. I'm not. I don't soften my views, my politics at all. Um, but we all, every, I, I disagree with my friends about things, and yet we can still recognize that as human beings, we have more in common than we disagree about. And uh, and second. The truth is, no one ever changed uh, their minds. And I'm uh, listen. I'm an activist. I believe in social change, which by definition means human change. People need to change their perspectives uh, on issues. That's my goal in the world. And you can't do that when you're just screaming and yelling at people, and they think that you hate them. No one has ever said, "Hey, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go join." I'm going to go join that camp or that side or whatever because they just they hate me so much that I I, I want to go be part of them. Like no, so being in conversation and relationship is the way to make change. We'll end we'll end with your story, but I want to get to the premise of the book, the opposite of hate. You went around the world looking for people who should have hated but have found love instead. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, you know, I actually don't think the opposite of hate is love. You don't have to love people to not hate them. Uh, but you have to recognize that we have this fundamental humanity in common, the, the idea that we are, no matter what you believe, no matter who you are, no matter your skin color, your gender, your race, your ethnicity, that we're human beings. Uh, we deserve to be treated with dignity and equality. And uh, and so, yeah, I went around the world, around the country and around the world, and I met former neo-Nazis and former terrorists and people who participated in genocides who, I mean, we're talking the extreme edge of hate here, the worst of the worst of hate, and they had turned their whole lives around. And I figured if they could stop hating, there was certainly hope for me, you know, to not you know, hate Trump supporters or to not, uh, you know, unconsciously buy into the racism and sexism uh, that's steeped in our society. So it gave me a lot of hope to hear their stories. The book is called The Opposite of Hate, Sally Cohen, our guest. Tell me the story about this R Rwandan um, terrorist, more or less. Who? T what? This is an unbelievable story. Tell this story. Well, I... No, no, I'm not going to give the whole thing away. <laughs> well, 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 give us a tease for it. Give us a tease for it. There's, don't there's, hate me. Listen, don't hate me for lovely, being beautiful. There's a lovely surprise ending. But, okay. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to spoil it for folks. But here's what I'll say. What's fascinating about you know we think that the kind of uh, you know genocides, these mass atrocities, like happened in Rwanda in 1994, the Holocaust in Serbia, we think of these things as so impossible and distant and, and strange. And what's important to realize is that they're fairly recent in the history of the world, that, and they've happened in a wide range of places. And in a place like Rwanda, look, those, those ethnic differences that, had, uh, that, that were the tensions that led to or that were played out in the genocide uh, between Hutus and Tutsis, a century ago, those differences actually didn't matter. They were uh, exploited and preyed upon, actually, by... European colonialists when they tried to when they decided to take over the area that was once Rwanda and and turn communities against each other so that they could better control the region and then you add to that hateful propaganda and, and right and, and you create you create hate it's not natural it's not yeah we have this tendency to you know this biological sort of evolutionary tendency to see people who are 
maybe different than us as be a little more afraid or wary of them. But the differences that we decide to give weight to as human beings, those are, we learn those. I, There's I, not a part of your brain that says, ah, you're going to, you know, be a racist or ah, you're going to be a sexist. No, we learn that. And they learned it in Rwanda too, but also they unlearned it. That's the hopeful part. I, I think about this every day because I see the hate I see the best and the worst of society as a talk show host in, in mm. the Midwest. And are you insinuating that our leaders want us and lead us down that road to hate the other side for their own benefit? I am. On I'm both sides? Uh, <laughs> I'm not even insinuating. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, we have a in, – in this country, and this is where you know there are some disturbing parallels – uh, that we can draw between uh, Rwanda and the United States. Um, and that, in fact, people from Rwanda themselves draw. In this country, we have a history of political leaders deliberately stoking fear and division uh, in order to uh, advance their own agendas. Now, it, the Democrats have done it. Uh, it happens to be something that was invented by the modern Republican Party in the form of what's called dog whistle politics that, uh, you know, Nixon and Reagan uh, and, and now certainly Donald Trump have, uh, you know, took to a new art form. Hold on a second. Hold uh, on. Hold on. Hold on a second. We're out of time. But I mean, that goes back to 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 Jefferson and Hamilton and, and, and George Washington days, doesn't well, it? I was going to say, but listen, politicians have 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 preyed on. Uh, our weaknesses and our divisions, but can also be have, can also be the people who call us to be our best selves. But let's be clear that you know democracy, our society begins with us. So we are the ones who allow ourselves to be divided and preyed upon and and turned hateful against one another. Or we're the ones who demand more of our leaders and say no, we're not going to support hate. We're going to vote for connection and unity and our best country and our best self instead. The book is called The Opposite of Hate. Sally Cohen, thanks for your time. Good luck with the book. Hey, thanks. 858 KTRS.